So we have to be mindful that racism, though, is sin. It's not a skin issue, it's a sin issue. And this is where Master Books, I think, is different um, than a lot, of, a lot of curriculum providers is that when we, we are a company that talks about racism and we have materials to support the issue of racism. The, the issue isn't black and white, it's sin. When you go back to Genesis, Genesis is a foundational scripture. And we see that there was a creator and he said, what makes man different is, and he made man and he made them in his image, in his image he made them. That's different than animals. God created man and then he tells man in his word that we are to love one another. We're to love the Lord God with our heart, soul, and mind. We're to love one another. Excited to be here today, and we're going to talk about a topic that's maybe a little sensitive, actually. Uh, but if you've been online at all, and you're watching uh, social media and the reactions to what happened in Minneapolis, now I'm going to be kind of careful, not because I don't believe that um, uh, the names aren't valuable, but just because we have, uh, I know there's also children that watch this with mom. So I want to be sensitive in the way I talk about things. Um, and I also want to make sure that I preface everything I say about racism from, um, if I make a mistake in the way I say something, listen to the heart more than, uh, than the way I phrase it. So, but I want to talk about racism. And when, when you see something in the news, something that I, I enjoyed, of course, I've never been really good at doing it the way they did, but I read an article once about the Kennedy family and how one of the patriarchs would take newspaper clippings and he would just set them on the table and then he would ask his kids to read it and then they would discuss it as a family and through doing that he shaped worldview. I wouldn't say we did that, but I have we have had a lot of current issue worldview discussions. Mm -hmm. Well, this is when, when we see a major thing happen in society and now there are riots. And so, so we, we see um, an abuse, um, uh, what, what appears to be somebody is, is murdered to, to riots and it's around the issue of race and racism. Um, we have an opportunity to help our children shape a healthy worldview because this is something that they're going to continue to face. It may be in different ways. Let me tell you a little bit on my backstory. Um, we adopted a child from the Caribbean. He's almost 15. That's crazy. That is. Time flies. So we adopted him 14 years ago as a baby. Uh, Kristen and I, my oldest, Carrie, flew down to the island and um, I was, you know, I had traveled quite a bit in the United States and I was pretty confident and we flew into this little island, uh, Dominica, and uh, I, was, I was in for a culture shock because in that island um, you have the Carib people who are the original um, inhabitants of the Caribbean and then, and then there was the black population. And as we got off the plane, it became very obvious that we were, we were really the minority. We, we didn't belong. Uh, you know, there was a section of the island where the, the what are those ships? The big ships, cruise, the cruise ships would stop and people would get out and shop in the shops. There was that little bit. But as you got into the heart of the island, we were by far um, the only people that were white there. And so as we went through the adoption process with him and we were in the, at the island, um, it was interesting to be on the flip side of racism, to, to have been in a place where we, didn't, we were looked down on. And I was used to being an American, so I wasn't used to somebody looking down on me. Number one, they looked down because of who we were as Americans and, and, 
And so there was that attitude. And then there was um, just a uh, kind of a social dominance, if you will, of the black population in the Caribbean, in, in Dominica. And so we were adopting a Carib baby, Carib Indian baby, and we were just shocked at the things they would say about the baby, about the parents, about um, the Carib people as a whole. And uh, it had a profound effect on us being in that place and being, being kind of in a spot where you're almost, you're afraid of, of the, the, the animosity and the anger that's coming um, towards you. So, so we had that experience. Then we come back to the United States with a baby who, he's Caribbean, he was very distinct from the black population in Dominica. But as you came into the U.S., I would say for most people, he looks, he would, he would look black. And we have eight children by birth, and then we have, have my son. And as we would go into the stores and that, uh, I can just remember the looks and the reactions. Mm -hmm. And um, even today, now we've been at this 14 years and we don't, I don't notice it at all. Um, and if I did, I probably would, I don't know, it doesn't bother me now. <laughs> yeah, but when the, when the girls will go somewhere, um, recently we even had somebody come up to one of the girls while she was with her brother and insult him and insult her and be very bold. Of course, now we live in a deep south, which is even uh, an entirely different environment. So, so we've kind of seen what it's like just a little bit, nowhere near um, uh, what some families ex ex experience. So then I became a pastor. And uh, the church that I pastored in Western New York was on the Seneca Nation Indian Reservation border. And there was a church there that had gone into disrepair. And uh, that church was kind of special to me. It was a church that was one of the first churches I had ever preached at. And uh, so I took it on as a project from our main church. And we went in and worked to rebuild the church and um, work with the people there. And that's where I got a real big experience in cultural differences, right? Because even though I grew up with a community next to a community of Native American people, uh, I didn't, um, um, I didn't understand all the emotions behind it. So I take over this church, and uh, at the at our at our parent church, um, we had Native Americans who attended as well from the reservation, and one of them came up one day who became he was a really good friend of mine. And he handed me a, a DVD and he said, you need to watch this. And he was, he's like, don't show anybody. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh boy, right? So I get this video and I put it in and it starts talking about the, um, the Indian schools, the Native American schools. And, and this was an experiment that America did, the American government did where they took Indian children off from the reservations and put them in these institutionalized schools. Um, why he wanted me to see this was because the man who developed the first school shared the same last name as me. His name was Colonel Richard Pratt. He was responsible for the Carlisle Indian School. He is also responsible for the, um, for the phrase to kill the Indian and save the man. And uh, and so he wanted me to be aware that I was associated or I could be associated with something that most of the Seneca Nation Indian Reservation looked at being a really bad thing. And so we had to work out some, some cultural issues between uh, that I, I didn't understand culture as well and they helped and I gained a, a sincere appreciation for the differences. Uh, in, in our cultures. But my, my greatest joys also came from serving in that, in that capacity. So I've had a little bit of experience when it comes to cultural diversity and race and racism. In fact, one of the coolest things, um, this is a little story, but I was pastoring one Sunday at the main church and it was a Sunday morning, I began speaking. And one of the gentlemen that came from 
from the reservation church was um, he he had he had a mohawk he wore glasses he always had leathers he was just scary looking right but the first Sunday he came to the church he just sat there and wept and uh, he and I are we're good friends and anyways during the service he walked in the back door and walked right down the main aisle at me and of course everyone thought oh my goodness pastor's gonna get shot because of the way he came down and he asked if he could please have the microphone and so I said sure <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, he turned around and he apologized and said you people don't know how bad I hate you and he said since I was a young boy I have hated you and and um, I just want to confess that hate and in Christ um, I love you and that was that was just such an emotional experience in the church because it was one of the times I mean he got so much love that day and it was so much healing and it was such a special time um, because who I couldn't even imagine like like as I'm walking and pastoring and serving that I am hated so badly by people uh, was was new to me and so when we talk about the subject of racism it's it's a difficult one because in different cultures different people can be discriminated against and in our culture the issue of racism um, tends to be one direction right white against anybody of any color but we've experienced it in other civilizations but or other cultures where we were the minority and racism went our way so we have to be mindful that racism though is sin it's not a skin issue it's a sin issue and this is where master books I think is different um, than a lot of a lot of curriculum providers is that when we we are a company that talks about racism and we have materials to support the issue of racism the, the issue isn't black and white, it's sin. It's the moment that man begins to elevate himself and not realize the importance of the fact that we are all created in God's image. And that's something that um, I just, like sometimes with Master Books, we're known as a young earth apologetics company. And every once in a while, someone will say, well, I don't understand or we don't believe in the young earth creation. How does young earth creation come? Okay, so if you take the Bible, and the, God was remarkable when he wrote the scriptures. So the scriptures are written. I know I'm doing a lot of talking. You just have to do a lot of No, you're good, and... but I'm just going to say, how did everybody jump in, into the app? Like, we see your comments coming in. Um, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to post. Like Randy had said earlier, we're being really careful about what we read and say out loud just because we know the kiddos are watching, but please be sure to comment and yes. just let us know your thoughts on everything. I'm reading through them as he's talking, so at the end we can touch on anything. Yep, yep. we'll answer any questions. Um, the, the scriptures, right? You have a library or a collection of books. Um, you have um, over 66 books total, the full canon of scripture written over a 1600 year period by 40 different authors in three different languages from three different continents. And the unity of the scripture is amazing because over 1600 years with over 40 different authors, they all had told the same story of a creator, of creation, a fallen race, and then a redeemed race through Jesus Christ. Well, if you take the, the history, what, what God did is he gave us and so-and-so begot, so-and-so, and so-and-so begot, so-and-so, and so-and-so begot, so-and-so. Plus, he also tells us, and when he was 600 years old, he died. So we have like a timetable from in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. But then we even know how old Adam was when he died and how old... Um, the sons were and how old all of the lineage. So we can actually say from the time of Christ, if we go backwards to the point of creation, we're talking about 6,000 plus years old. The earth is being 6,000 plus years old. And if we do that, if we then we look at the science and we say, 
but we can understand the science because we had a global catastrophe, which was the flood. And so from the evidence of the flood is where we see the fossil record and we see the catastrophe that happened. But we also understand that, that we all come from one descendant, from one man, one woman, Adam and Eve. And then again, through, through Noah's line, we, we all trace back to one man and one woman. And the genetics, if you look at the genetics, the genetics from Adam and Eve were very complete. They were capable of producing many different colors of children, many different features. As you go through time, the process of microevolution is losing information. So we lose, like I've lost the capacity to, if when I married um, Kristen, who is also white, we lose most of our capacity to produce dark-skinned child because we don't have those genetics anymore in our so our children are white but that doesn't mean that we didn't come from um, a dna that originally had that capacity in it hopefully that makes sense okay so so we have this six thousand year time frame when you go back to genesis genesis is a foundational scripture and we see that there was a creator and he said what makes man different is and he made man and he made them in his image in his image he made them that's different than animals so we have these two opposing worldviews okay so we have a creationist worldview that says in the beginning god created and he called it good and man was good and this is before the fall then we have this evolutionary worldview, a good to you type worldview that says over, you know, there was a big bang and then billions of years of struggle and cosmic chance and all of these things. And eventually you start to have this um, evolution of man. And if you look at Darwin's um, teachings, which the evolutionary worldview was based on his, a lot of his teachings, you begin to see that the races are a genetic timetable so to speak, of man. And so Caucasian whites were at the top of the evolutionary cycle. And then, and, and then the, the different people groups were, you know, you have gorillas to white people and we, they placed them in between so that there was this mindset, we're all animals, and these are different stages of evolution that we see. And so this programming begins to um, kind of take place in culture that we're all animals. And survival of the fittest is the way that, that we, we run, as opposed to God created man. And then he tells man in his word that we are to love one another. We're to love the Lord God with our heart, soul, and mind. We're to love one another. He tells us that thou shalt not murder. He gives us commandments that says, listen, this is my intention for the way you guys behave. So... Um, when we, when we see an issue of racism, something that we can begin to do with our children is really begin to tell them, listen, it's not about skin color, it's about sin. It's about when, when God tells us that we are all created in the image of God. Man was created on day six and he's unique from animals. He did not evolve from animals, he's unique from animals. And the difference between me and a very dark skinned person or a person from another culture is, is less than 2%. It, and that's all melanonin in skin, it can be fatty tissue around the eyes, it can be the shape of nose, it's not related to being a human kind. And so when we see something happen on the news that, that there's racism, those, that may be a cultural issue, but in, in light of God's word, what we have is we have one group of people and what we saw that day was sin. That's what sin looks like. I've told this before, I'm gonna, I, 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 it's an illustration that I think works, but if I go and buy a washing machine, there's an owner's manual. If I bring that washing machine home and I take the owner's manual and I set it on the shelf and say, I don't need that, but I really would like my washing machine to be laid on the side. So I just take that, lay in, uh, that washing machine, I lay it on the side, I put my laundry in it, and then I plug it in and run it. It's going to break. The water is going to short out the electrical system. There's going to be issues that happen with that washing machine. Well, that's what, so, 
God gave his creation an owner's manual, the Bible, his word. And when we take that owner's manual, set it aside and say, no, we want it this way. We want to define our own rules. We want to, to, to do things the way we want them to do. And we begin to run it. It begins to short circuit the system and break. And so this is what sin is. Sin is called missing the mark. And so when we see something like that, it's, it's, it's horrible and it needs to be dealt with. And, 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 and yeah, there's cultural issues that we need to deal with. But at the heart of it, what we saw was sin. And, and we, we in our culture have taken God's word, right? And, and we've just set it on the shelf. I mean, how crazy that we, we can keep um, clinics that murder babies open during a time of, of this, this virus and say that that's essential, that that's like a loss of human life that we, we should be as outraged about, that we see that there's a discrimination against, against even in that case, um, color. But that's what happens when sin is present. And, and I think we just have this opportunity to begin training our children. Listen, in fact, I, I had a friend once who was, he was kind of struggling in his faith. And I gave him one of the books that I'm going to recommend, which is One Race, One Blood. And that, he said that book is, is, was the book that like solidified his faith. He said he just couldn't reconcile. I, I remember being in school. I remember seeing the charts that showed, you know, here's the, here's the evolutionary cycle up and then, and then kind of leading to the fact of who I was versus who other people were in the evolutionary cycle. And so that programming is so deep inside society's mind. And I think when we have that society, that, that view, um, it's very unhealthy, but we can teach our children. It doesn't matter what the color of a person's skin and that person was created in the image of God. And, and that life is valuable. God says there's value in that life. And, um, and we can begin approaching it that way. Let's see. There's some resources that I would love to recommend um, for families. One Blood uh, for Kids. This is probably backwards because of the camera. One Blood for Kids is an excellent resource for families because what Ken Ham does, and I think, I think to me this is leading edge as far as the issue of racism goes, but what Ken does is he says, listen, there are seven races, spiritual races. There's the created race, which was perfect. There's the fallen race, race which disobeyed God. There's the rescued race, which was Noah at the time of, of the catastrophe, the divided race, that's where all of the people groups were split up and divided at the time of the Tower of Babel. Uh, the saved race, which is in Christ. The lost race, which are those who reject Christ. And the Lamb's race, which are those of us who have received Christ. The hope for racism is Jesus Christ and the message that we all have fallen short of God's glory. We all have a sin issue, but Jesus Christ covers that sin issue and we can be born anew in him as the lamb's race. So this book talks a lot about um, the genetics, the DNA. It talks about, um, uh, let's see, cultures. Um, it talks about things like interracial marriage, um, just the history of slavery in the Bible. Um, the side effects of evolution, skin tone, some of the tragedies that have happened over history, like to the Aborigine people. Um, so this is a fantastic resource for families. Uh, One Race, One Blood uh, has just been revised. Uh, Ken Ham wrote it with Charles Ware, who um, he does uh, training and, um, let's see, I know he does training for like Walmart and some different companies as far as um, racism and diversity. And uh, this is a great book to read as well, to have an awareness of um, the topic and how to talk about the topic with your kids. Uh, the new quick answers to social issues. Uh, it's a very, there's a lot of things in this book. And we haven't really talked too much about this book. We need to. 
uh, life issues, equality issues, marriage, sexual and gender issues, environmental issues. Um, this does touch on the issue of racism and again takes the same stance all people in their sinful pride can find any number of reasons to exalt themselves and belittle others. Racism in any form rejects the equality of every person assigned by the Creator God Himself. Um, and then with all the commentary on racism today, there's only one real solution, the Gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible alone establishes the equality of all people. See, when you take an evolutionary worldview, you have to say, how, like, what is truth? We're all here by time and chance and we make up truth. But when we believe in, in God's word and we believe that God is the creator, his word is absolute truth. And so you can't flip back and forth between the two. So quick answers to social issues is a great one to find. Just quick answers to some of the issues that are very relevant to today. And then the answers book for kids, uh, this is volume six. It talks about the racism a little bit about race. It talks about the Tower of Babel and, and some of the different people groups. So if you have that, this is a good place to get resources as well. So those would be four good starting points to educate yourself, maybe do a family study and really begin looking at some of the issues. Don't, you don't have to avoid, when you really know the scriptures and you know what God's intent for his creation was, you don't have to avoid the hard issues. And the book of Genesis is foundational. Book of Genesis is where marriage is established between one man and one woman. Anything other than that is sin. It's turning the washing machine on its side. And why do you see society begin to short out? Well, because you're not running the machine like the operator's manual said. God was very clear in what he expected from us. And when we deviate from that, we have problems. And, and unfortunately, we're experiencing a short right now. And it's a bad short that happened. And if you had to watch it or you watched it, um, I mean, it would break you up to see, to see that, and I think that it's um, valuable to, to be aware of how to educate our children so that when they encounter these issues, they come up with um, a better answer. Because most people just say, we need to do something better. Well, we need to return to the Word of God, and we need Christ. That's our only hope as a society. You can't make sinful hearts try harder and be better don't work. Anna W. had said earlier in the comments, she said regarding your friend from the church, um, his heart was changed by the Holy Spirit. That's what we need to be praying for, the recognition that racism is a sin and for the Holy Spirit to change hearts. Yes, because we saw it. It was a miracle. It was an absolute miracle what happened that day, but it was only the work of the Holy Spirit that could do that. Yeah, and then Kim just asked if we could, somebody could post the recommended resources so that she could look them up. Yes, one of us will jump in a comment and post them. We're all going to the community and we'll, just... We'll post it in the community. Write down what everything that he suggested. Yep. Yep. Were there any other questions? And then I'm just kind of comments about where people are with things. And... Okay. So. Good. Well, I hope that this was helpful and that there was um, uh, <laughs> some, some insight into it. Um, we found over the years, even with when we were pastoring, sometimes I would take a topic and just put it up on the screen and then we would look at the biblical worldview and talk about it because these are the relevant things. And sometimes we can isolate and say, well, this is happening here, but our religious faith is over here. But it really doesn't do any good because we have to combine the two and, and actually have that discussion. So, um, you know... I'll tell you, this is interesting in the community. When we started homeschooling 20 years ago, if you went to a homeschool convention, it was very much rural families, and it was almost all white families that homeschooled. And we have seen tremendous growth in uh, black families, Korean families, um, Hispanic families who are starting to homeschool. And that is that's so exciting because um, I believe that all of us who are created in the image of God, all of us who are called according to his purpose, are called according to his plan, uh, and that all of our children um, are needed to accomplish what he has for the kingdom. We need ambassadors. It doesn't really matter what skin color they are, 
we need ambassadors um, to advance the kingdom and uh, we believe homeschooling is a phenomenal way to do it so okay well god bless you guys um, and we will work to get this up on youtube as quickly as possible as well so that you have access to it and uh, to, to be able to play it back and if you have any questions be sure to post or post that's funny um said, Randy, i really thought you were mexican <laughs> <laughs> are you serious that I... you have really dark skin there was a joke in the family that um my grandfather was cuban so you have some but... cuban yeah, but my genetics, we did a genetics test, and I was pretty much Irish and English. So, Irish, English, and German. So, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't Mexican at all. That's funny. No Hispanic at all. No, but now that we've moved here, I, I coached a soccer team, and I had my son, who is blonde, and a whole team of these little Mexican boys that were so cute and were so adorable. good at soccer, but I didn't understand the word they said and I didn't pronounce any of their names right and their families would all sit and laugh at me, <laughs> but we won games so they kept me. It was a really awesome entertaining summer. Yeah, they were all, they're all like this big and I'm my 250 so pound self. Sports, and, yeah. yeah, so it was fun. All right, <laughs> I don't know why we went there. So, hey guys, God bless you, and, and I pray that the Lord um, just give you special wisdom and peace as you approach this topic with your children. All right, God bless you. Bye.